This is what some of the top cities in the world like Singapore, Dubai and New York look like. Let's go back in time by about 100 years to the year 1932. This is the famous photo called Lunch Atop a Skyscraper. Now, more than the photo itself, I want you to take a look at the backdrop of the photo. That was New York City almost 100 years ago. Can you believe that? New York had some brilliant skyscrapers and beautiful infrastructure 100 years ago. Meanwhile, today in 2025, most of our cities look like this. Why don't we have such beautiful buildings? Why can't we build such skyscrapers? Is it an engineering problem or is it a financial problem? It can't be an engineering problem, right? Because we've built some of the largest bridges and some of the largest metros in the world. Then, why don't we see such skyscrapers in our cities? Hi, I'm Arun Guntur and you're watching Breakdown by TBH. Let's go back a little bit and understand how a piece of land or real estate gets its value. Who gets to decide which piece of land is worth 5,000 rupees per square feet and which piece of land is worth 50,000 per square feet? As our cities started to develop, a lot of people started moving into these cities in search for a better life. After India gained its independence, India was a very poor country. With so many people migrating to the cities, the government faced an enormous challenge. They had to provide adequate accommodation to so many people. At that time, Charles Korea, who is one of India's leading architects, suggested a solution to scale the cities horizontally. But why horizontal? Well, there were two very important reasons for it. It's cheaper to build smaller buildings and Building smaller buildings takes much less time. So, the government approved this plan and introduced FSI limits or the Floor Space Index. Basically, if you have a plot size of 10,000 square feet and the FSI limit is 1, then you can build 10,000 square feet of building in that land. And if the FSI is 2, then you can build 2,000 square feet of building in that land. Now, this FSI or Floor Space Index is the main metric that dictates the skyline in our cities. In Singapore, the FSI is 25. In Tokyo, it's 20. Manhattan has an FSI of 12 which basically means that they can build very tall vertical buildings. In Mumbai, the highest FSI is just 5. Then why can't we just increase our FSI to 15 or even 20? Then we can also build skyscrapers, right? Well, technically you can, but our politicians won't. Okay, let's dive a little deeper into this. The value of real estate is determined by the supply and demand for that piece of land. Let's say there's an island which has 1000 people on it. You can either build 1000 homes horizontally filling up the entire space or you can build 1000 homes vertically which should take up very little space. Let's say 100 more people want to come into this land from outside. When you build houses horizontally, there's no more space available. So the demand for each piece of land increases because the supply isn't there. So the price of land skyrockets. But if the city was built more vertically, then it can accommodate a lot more people because there's a lot of supply. This is the exact same problem in Mumbai. Just 500 families own 50% of the land in Mumbai. By controlling the supply of this real estate, they can control the price of real estate in Mumbai. Which is why you see the real estate prices in Mumbai are higher than Dubai and even many American cities. But that's not the only reason. By increasing the FSI, the density of population in a city also increases. And with a higher population density comes traffic problems. So the only way to increase this FSI would be to make wider roads. But that's not really true. Singapore has built some incredible skyscrapers even along two-lane roads. They have been able to achieve this by developing their public transportation. Singapore shows us how it's possible to have enormous density without creating traffic congestion. If you look at Indian cities, you will find high sky-rise buildings in gated communities right next to PG-style constructions. There's no proper planning. One of the big reasons for not increasing the FSI in India is traffic. But unfortunately, this isn't completely true either. When you don't increase the FSI from time to time, the city starts to expand in all directions. And one of the biggest examples for this is Bangalore. If you think Mumbai has low FSI limits, Bangalore is worse. The highest FSI limit in Bangalore is just 4. In Mumbai, any building that's taller than 150 meters is considered a skyscraper. But in Bangalore, a 15 meter tall building is considered a skyscraper. But in India, we also have a city which has no FSI limits. And that's Hyderabad. But then, why are there almost no skyscrapers in Hyderabad, even when they have no FSI restrictions? Well, that's because of shortage of water and electricity. Skyscrapers require a lot of water and electricity. If you take a 50 floor building, which has about 1000 houses, it requires about 2.5 lakh liters of water every single day and 40,000 kilowatt of electricity. Not just that, 
Our cities aren't designed to even handle such enormous amounts of waste that come out of these buildings. So before even considering building such skyscrapers, our city's drainage system needs to be developed. Now apart from FSI, you also need permissions from the airport authorities in a city to be able to construct tall buildings. The closer the proximity to an airport, the tighter the restrictions. For example, if you look at Bangalore, there are two airports. The domestic and international passenger airport and there's the defense HAL airport within the city. Another big reason reason why we don't see high-rise buildings in India is cultural preference. Most people in India prefer to live either in an independent house or in villas. Also, land is bought and sold in very small parcels, either as 30-40 or 60-40 sites. This creates a huge urban sprawl. To build very tall buildings, developers need large tracts of contiguous land at least one acre for a self-sustainable apartment with in-house green spaces. That is possible only if the government introduces bold housing reforms for large parcels of land to be available for construction. But are skyscrapers even necessary in the first place? Well, the only way the skyscraper model can be feasible is if the builder can sell all the floors. In China, a lot of the skyscrapers remain unsold. So the Chinese government has even put a ban on building more skyscrapers. If you looked in the European cities like Amsterdam, they have no skyscrapers either. But they still have a very good population density. Every piece of land that's available in the city is built on optimal height and used for public amenities. So maybe our Indian cities don't really need massive skyscrapers. We may be able to find a middle ground where we prevent our cities from sprawling further by embracing a little vertical growth. The municipal authorities need to change our outdated rules and modify them to prevent the choking of our cities. Well, that's it for me. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such content. Until next time, bye-bye.